This is a roof we used to shoot a 20 hour video series. And before I pull it apart for a class coming up this weekend, I'm gonna talk about how to achieve the runs for certain aspects of this roof. You can find the run and you know the pitch, you can find the rafter length. So starting with the main ridge, and the L-shaped extension ridge. You'll notice that the main ridge is in line with the end king common, as is the short ridge in line with the king common. So that makes finding the ridge lengths pretty easy, starting with dividing the span in half because the ridge is centered, measuring three quarters on either side, and then pulling it from the outside corner to the mark will give you the run of the rafter and location of ridge. How do you get the length of that main ridge? Well, since the ridges are both the same height and the plates are the same elevation and the pitches are the same, that same span is on this end. So Half of it, three quarters on either side, will give you the post. But not only will it give you the post location, since the post is in line with the end of the ridge, then that's where the ridge begins. And over here, if you'll see this common here, this king common here, this side of this king common is where the ridge ends. So laying out the plate, just Lay your tape measure on that line, measure it to this line out here, and that'll give you the length of that ridge before you do any framing. And then this one we just established, which was essentially, since it ends, this ridge ends on this side, because it butts into it, the ridge on this side of the common rafter, then the length of that ridge is from this side of the common to the end of the plate there, run it wild, say for fascia and just drop cut it in the air, run some lookouts here to hang a barge rafter. That's the length of those two ridges. What about this little short Dutch gable ridge? And if you look at where the hip terminates, terminates into the side of the common rafter here, right? See it? All right, so, and as do the common rafters themselves or the backside of the ledger. So the run is from this face to the end of the plate. And what happens in one direction happens in the other. So pull that run, pull it this direction, make a mark with the same one from this corner, make a mark and measure in between the marks and that'll give you the length of this ledger. If you rip a bevel on the top, makes it easy to plane out and you plane the leading edge where it runs into the side of the bevel. It's not gonna be necessarily this, this. it'll be in plane here somewhere, right? And that'll give you the location of the Dutch gable. It'll give you the run of the common rafters minus the thickness of the ledge, ledger, the run of the hip rafters, which this is basic stuff. This is a 912 pitch to get the secant for this common rafter on this roof is nine squared plus 12 squared equals 15 inches. You know, the nine squared plus 12 squared Square root of is 15 inches divided by 12 inches to put it in inches and parts of an inch will be 1.25 times the common rafter run will give you the length of the common rafter. Same thing for the hip, except for the hip is elongated. The run is longer, the rises are the same. Corresponding rise of a common rafter is that of a, of a hip. So, but a hip, if you take a square, a box, 12 by 12 box, and draw a diagonal. That'll give you 
16.97 of an inch. So for every 12 inches, the common rafter runs, the hip runs at 16.97, but the rise is the same. So nine square plus 16.9 square, uh, uh, seven squared equals the hypotenuse of which if you divide by 12, will give you the secant, which is 1.6 or so for the hip rafter. You divide it by 12 to put it in inches and parts of an inch. So 1.6 for the hips, 1.6 and some change for the hips for a 912 pitch. Same with the valley, same thing here. So, and then we multiply that by the run, gives you the hip length, and it happens to be the same run as the valley. Wow, that's not true. It's the same. This valley and the hip on the far side of the, are the same run, which is half this span minus the ridge thickness divided in half. Gives you the run for this valley times 1.6 will give you to the center line. And you'll notice this is a valley, but there's no inside corner here. Normally, it'd be an inside corner. You treat it the same, though. Center line there. Now, if there was an inside corner, this line here, that's where the notch would have to extend out to this line here to accommodate the out, the inside corner, the wall coming in here. So this side is notched to that point, but this side is run all the way to the plate. So we have an irregular notch down here. But if this was an actual inside corner, the length of the rafter... Valley rafter would be to there, but the notch would be extended out an additional three quarters on either side, essentially. From the center line, you can see it's actually in plan view further out, right? So, and then the hip is the opposite in that the center line of the hip is over the corner, right? And then that's where your notch is but you're, it actually runs through the plate and the heel stand is established where the side of the hip runs through the plate line here. This is the heel stand, which is the stand given to you by the common rafter. Now how we go over and over achieving jack rafter lengths. And so we're not gonna do that, but if you had this ridge on the ground and you had pulled layout on it based on that common over there or whatever, based on the end king common, essentially this one here, you'd pull 16 or in this case, 12 inches and go. And I give you your marks. If this was on the rack and you wanted to establish this length, you would have to subtract these two thicknesses here to get to this leading edge because that's where the jack terminates, right? So you subtract an inch and a half for the ridge that's butting into it, plus an inch and a sixteenth for the 45 thickness, half the 45 thickness of a two by framing member. So an inch plus inch and a half is two and a half plus about a sixteenth. It's two and nine sixteenths. And that'll give you this length right from here. That's your run and plan view because anything that happens in one direction happens the other because it's a 45 degree angle and plan view. So that'll give you the short points. You always want to be calculating to the short point if you're using a skill saw, but to the long point probably if you're say on the East Coast, Midwest, and you're using a sidewinder saw. So you would measure from there to the long point side, we measure to the short point side, multiply it by the secant, 1.25, give you the rafter length there. And then you just add the common difference between the two, which is 12, because it's 12 inches on center, times 1.25, you know, which is basically 12 and a quarter, a quarter of 12 is three, right? So 15 inches, you add 15 inches to this, and so on and so forth. That's pretty straightforward. The only little complicated aspect, I guess, is the valley. Common rafter comes down, terminates into the side of the valley, but has a seat cut, right? 
So with these things, you want to lay out the seat cut first before you do any side cuts. So you treat it like a regular common rafter. You don't cut it out, but you mark it out. You have your heel stand and your seat cut, and then you'll notice here it's subtracted. This is where it would terminate. This would be the plate line. This would be where the corn, it changes direction here if it was popped out like this, standard valley. You subtract your inch and a sixteenth to the long point, but not until you've already calculated your heel stand. So you draw this line, and then you draw an additional inch and sixteenth, draw another line, and that would be a long point here. Run your saw across it, and then cut out the seat cut. And that would establish the proper height. When you're done, it'll plane into zero, of course, is where it would be had you not cut the 45 on it. It would have planed right down to here. Cut the 45, it still planes down there. The seat cut is establishing that. So yeah, pretty straightforward model. Can't know too much about what you're doing.